All right, good morning, everybody. Um, so we just finished our unit on solving polynomials. So our synthetic division, our factoring completely, our rational root theorem. Now we're going to kind of do it backwards. So I'm going to give you stuff. We're going to start writing our equation or writing polynomials. Um, we'll look at behavior symmetry. We'll kind of build up to start graphing tomorrow um, and kind of lead up to graphing our polynomials. So we just finished solving by finding zeros. Now we're gonna be given zeros and we have to do the process again. So let's review how we solved a polynomial. So if we have two terms, remember we'd factor it. Sorry, that's three terms, but it's an x squared. So <coughs> you're gonna factor it. So we got what factors of two give you three? So two and one. So remember x plus two and x plus one. Remember that is what we called our factored form. Then we would set each part equal to zero. And these are called our zeros or our roots or our solutions or our x-intercepts, whatever you want to call. So kind of looking at that, you need to kind of get those down, get our vocabs down so we know what's going on so nothing is catching us by surprise. We got our factored form and we got our zeros. So we're gonna use what we did there and we're gonna start from the bottom and kind of work our way back up to the top. So we are only going to use the zeros that are given here. So we're gonna write a polynomial with the least degree. So that just kind of means only use what's given as rational coefficients and a leading coefficient of one and zero and five as zeros. So what that tells me right here, rational coefficients means no i or square roots. And the leading coefficient is one, so that tells me no GCF. So a bunch of different things I've just thrown in at once, so kind of knowing what's going on. Um, I'll change colors, so we don't have to deal with that. So what I give you here is that I have a zero, so x is equal to zero and x is equal to five. So that's my zero form. So I'm taking what we did backwards, and I'm gonna change that into factored form. So x is equal to zero, that's already into factored form. This would be x minus five is equal to zero. So remember, this is changing it back to factored form. And now, all I'm gonna do is take those, and I'm gonna multiply them together. So distribute, so x squared minus five x. Put your function notation, and we have our polynomial. So this is kind of where we are going. All right. So write a polynomial at least degree that has rational coefficients and leading coefficient of one, and x equals three, x equals two, and x equals negative two as my zeros. So that tells me I got x minus three, I got x minus two, and I have x plus two in factored form. So now all we gotta do is multiply them together. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and FOIL this. So x squared minus two x minus three x plus six. So my blue FOIL right here, x squared minus five x plus six. Then I'm gonna multiply it by the x plus two. So you gotta do it twice. So remember, I'm just gonna distribute everything. So some of y'all like to do the box. I just like to foil and go. Um, if you need to do the box, I'll do this one with the box and I'll do mine the other way. So x and two, I'll do the other one below the other way. x squared, negative five x, six. So remember, you just distribute. So x cubed, two x squared, minus 10 x, <laughs> Squared, sorry, that bell threw me off. Minus 10x, 6x, and it gives us a 12. This is a five, I don't know what I did there. So minus five x squared. So combining like terms, x cubed, um, that gives me a minus three x squared when I add the diagonals, then I got a minus four x and a plus 12. And you got your polynomial. So one more, 
with least degree. So I have, I have x is equal to 1, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 5. So x minus 1, x minus 3, and x minus 5. So when I take this, this one doesn't exist. I just misread that. I'm sorry. I only have the two. So all I got to do is foil it. So, jeez. So first outside, inside last. So x squared minus 5x minus 3x plus 15. So x squared minus 8x plus 15. And you're good to go. So nice and easy way to take your zeros, switch them to factored form, foil and multiply it all out. So some important theorems we really need to know with these. So take your time writing these down. Your complex conjugate theorem. The first one is if a plus bi is a root, then a minus bi always has to be a root. So for example, if i is a root, then so is negative i. It's not gonna be listed, you have to know that. If two minus four i is root, then it's conjugate, two plus four i has to be a root. They always come in pairs. So you never forget that, please. Um, then the same thing with irrational roots. If a plus, and that's the same thing. So if a plus the square root of b, because I'm talking about rational as a root, then a minus root b is always a root. So kind of walk through practical. If square root of 2 is a root, then negative square root of 2 has to be a root. Same thing in negative five plus root seven, then negative five minus root seven is a root. Just like our conjugates we talked about when multiplying um, or dividing, your conjugates still appear here. Um, big important thing here, when using the above theorems, it is often easier to multiply them first. Get them out of the way so you're not dealing with anything crazy. All right, so let's look at a couple. So write a polynomial function given all of this stuff. So x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, x is equal to square root of 6, and you also have to know x is equal to negative square root of 6. That will also be a root. Okay? I don't know why I keep writing this 1. It throws me off. That's my fault because it's a coefficient. I just see the 1. It's a coefficient. So... I got an x plus 2, I got an x minus root 6, and then I also have x plus root 6. So you have to know that last one is there. Must include the conjugate. So first, let's multiply those together. So x squared plus x squared of 6 minus x squared of 6 minus square root of 36. So the reason I did that first is because those middle terms always cancel. And you just get x squared minus the square root of 36, which the square root of 36 is simply just 6. So it simplifies a lot. Now we just distribute this. So x cubed minus 6x plus 2x squared minus 12. So my answer here, put it in order. We're good to go. So x squared, or x to the third, plus 2x squared minus 6x plus 12. Cool? All right. I went back, made a mistake. I got to fix this. So that's a minus. That should have been a minus here. I don't know why I did that. Um, so that is going to change. This factor is going to be a minus. This one's going to be a plus in the back. So a plus in the back and a minus here. I apologize. But I don't want to go back and edit it. So y'all can fix that. So the last one, let's look at E. Write a polynomial of least degree. I'm not going to mess up here. So I got x is equal to 0. x is equal to 3. x is equal to negative 4i. So you also have to include positive 4i. So they're both going to be there. So what I have here is x times x minus 3 times x plus 4i times x minus 4i. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply two things together. So I'm going to multiply these two together and I'm going to multiply these two together. 
So the first one, I'm gonna multiply it together. I got x squared minus three x. Then when I FOIL the other one, I got x squared plus four i x minus four i x. So those are gonna cancel. So it's ended up being x squared minus 16 i squared. Remember, i squared is equal to negative one. So you end up getting x squared plus 16. So FOIL it, your middle terms cancel, you end up getting negative 16 i squared. I squared is equal to negative one. So x squared plus 16. Now we just FOIL this out. So x to the fourth plus 16 x squared minus three x to the third, 16 times three gives me 48. So that would be a minus 48 x. And then just put it in order. So f of x equals x to the fourth minus three x to the third, 16 x squared minus 48 x. And you're good to go. So that's kind of a quick crash course on <coughs> writing our equations. So just remember your two theorems and I think you will be okay. A couple more things we're gonna talk about today is in behavior, which is the robot dance, which I would show you, but I'm not a good dancer. Um, we could talk about that. And then we'll get into a little bit of symmetry, kind of go kind of quick through this to lead into our graphing. So in behavior, exactly the same what we did for quadratics, just now it works with any degree. <clears throat> so what we know here, I kind of look at it a little different, I'm not gonna dance, but um, if your degree is even, your leading coefficient po is positive, so even and positive, so even and positive, they both go up. So you got a little dude, I guess I can do this. His arms are going up. So direction, we'll do left first, right second. So we're gonna go up and up. If my degree is even and my leading coefficient is negative, so E and negative, we're both gonna go down. Even means they go the same way, negative to go down, so down and down. Degree is odd, and I have a positive leading coefficient. It's gonna kind of be going uphill, so up and down, so down to the left, up to the right. Odd and negative, we got a little dude. It's gonna go up to the left and down to the right. So your slope kind of looks like it's going downhill. So pretty little robot dance, we're kind of looking at things. So describe the end behavior of each polynomial. So I'm looking at these, I'm gonna kind of zoom in so you can see it. Um, so what I'm looking for, it's got an odd leading coefficient. Okay, and that's an even, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's got an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. I got all sorts of backwards. So E negative, so if I'm looking here, left side E negative is going to go down. So that's gonna be negative infinity. Your right side with an E negative, it's also gonna go down. Because they're even, they're both going down, 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 so negative infinity. So what I have here as F approaches, <clears throat> that's kind of what we're looking at here. So it's F, F, excuse me, as X approaches the left side, it's gonna go down. As X approaches the right side, it's gonna go down, and we're good to go. So writing it formally, as X approaches negative infinity, your function, it's gonna go down, so F of X is gonna approach negative infinity. And then as X approaches positive infinity, as X goes to the right, your function is gonna go down as well. So all you have to do is really change in what is underlined here. So this is all that is really gonna change in your formal definitions. So here, my degree is odd. My leading coefficient is one, so it's positive. So what that tells me here, odd and positive, if I look up here as x approaches negative infinity, so the left side, 
the left side with my O positive right here is gonna go down, so it's gonna approach negative infinity. As X approaches positive infinity, my function is gonna go up, so it's gonna get approach positive infinity. So all the remember, all that is stated on the left side is as X approaches negative infinity, that just means it's going to the left. These are my solutions, these are what my chart is telling me. So if I look here at three, that's odd. That's negative, so an O negative. O negative is up and down. I'll try to clarify things. So then, as X approaches negative infinity, F of X is gonna approach something. As X approaches positive infinity, F of X is gonna approach something. That's what you're writing every time. Remember, I did it left and right, so up is negative infinity, so that's gonna give me a positive. So the left, this is left slash right. Remember left is negative infinity, right is positive infinity, so left comes first, right comes second. So up comes first, down is negative infinity, and you're good to go. All right, the last one. My degree here is four, so that is even. My leading coefficient is one, so that's positive because it's need to put it in standard form. Please don't forget that, so that's an E positive. So as X approaches negative infinity, your function's gonna approach something, and I'll talk about that. Then as X approaches positive infinity, your function is gonna approach something. So you're writing the same thing every time. E positive means they're both gonna go up, up, and up. If you look at your little guy, that's what his arms are doing. So they're both gonna do positive infinity. Cool? So you're writing the same thing every time. Look at your chart. Look at what his arms are doing. If they're both going anywhere over here, left is came first, right came second. So if it's going up, it's approaching positive infinity. If it's going down, it's approaching negative infinity. All right, lastly, I know this is a long video and I apologize, but we're getting there. So algebraically simple, it's all about the exponents. It's important to remember that <coughs> X is X to the first. 8 is 8x to the 0, so for here, um, we're talking about this. Remember, this is odd and even, so kind of looking at this. Um, if we kind of look at our graphs, I uh, should have color coordinated these, but whatever. If it's even, remember it's reflective about the y-axis. If it's odd, reflective about the origin so keep that split um, if all of the exponents are even the function is even it's symmetric about the y-axis all the functions or exponents are odd it's odd if you have a mismatch it's neither it's very very straightforward so here if I'm looking at this Number one, I have my equation. I'm looking at all of my exponents. I got a two, I got a four, and I got a zero. So they're all even. And it's gonna be symmetric about the y-axis. If I just jump down here to three, I got a three and I got a zero. So remember that's x to the zero, it's a mismatch. So there is no symmetry. That's all you're looking at, just comparing exponents. Here I got a three and I got a one, so it's odd. Everything is odd, we're good to go. Here I got a one and a four, I'm done. No symmetry. So make sure you're looking at these notes, you're reading these, you understand symmetry is all about the exponents. Graphically, it's looking at the symmetry. You know you're in behavior, we're writing the same thing every time, just filling in the last terms. And you know how to get from a zero on. So I understand it's going to be a little confusing for a little bit. Um, please practice. Please check your solutions. Please, let's look at it. If you have questions, let me know. Um, and that's it. So I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you all soon.